Hey y'all, I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we're gonna do a little, um, another page in our watercolor journal and someone had requested a door um, or to do some doors. What a fun little project. So we're actually gonna do a little hobbit hole door. So a round door. I'm sure this is not what they were thinking of, but that is what I feel like painting today. And I'm just realizing I'm gonna mask out my edges because I'm going to paint right to the edge so bear with me feel free to fast forward this part but we're going to do a little drawing and then a whole lot of painting so we're going to do it in the side of a hill we're going to paint some lovely beautiful hills and then some flowers probably like around the door a little bit okay there we go we have that masked out taped out so I can create a nice little border. They might not be perfectly straight. I'm sorry if that's really bothering you. Okay, so let me get my pencil and we will draw out our door. So I'm gonna put it right in the center of the uh, image here of the painting. So the first hill is just going to be in the front here, up and down. So you should be able to see that like a nice little bell curve. Okay. And then we are going to put, if you aren't confident um, in drawing circles, you could always just use something that's circular, this or the bottom of a cup. I am going to just draw mine in here. best I can. And if it's a little wonky, that's okay. A little hobbit hole door can be wonky. So I went right to the bottom so you don't actually even see the bottom. And then I am going to put some flowers along the one side of it here. Nothing in particular, but just kind of a jagged edge shape here that I will paint around and fill in with kind of some flowers that go around the outside. The only other thing I really need on this door is a spot for a handle. You can put that in later. If you wanna put in like a little tiny window in the center or some other kind of feature that might be cute or interesting. So tiny, tiny window. Um, I will be adding on kind of some planks. It'll be made out of wood can draw those in if you want. Try not to draw them too harsh and too perfect. You want them to be kind of a little organic and creaky and have a little imperfection to them. And when we paint them in, you can do that as well, but like should be a little wider in spots and narrower in others. So I'm just drawing it in uh, so you can kind of see so like this might have like a little knot hole there or something like that. Okay. And then I'm also going to put in just another edge. So basically our door frame, which will be slightly different color than the door itself. And then the rest of this will be a hill around it. Okay, and then let's put in some rolling hills behind it. So you don't have to be too um, perfect or careful with these. Oh, sorry for shaking that. Uh, let's put this one in here. And you can do as many or as few as you want. I don't know if you notice this spot on my book here. This is actually a burn spot. So um, if you have a heated dryer, like a heat tool, be careful. When I was drying this side, I wasn't paying attention. I got it too close to the paper and left it there too long and it actually burnt the paper um, through to the other side. So that's what I get for trying to multitask but I'm still gonna use this page for sure. All right, so there we go. You can add other details into your landscape 
with your little hobbit hole uh, door if you want trees or bushes or other things I'm just going to leave it purely um, uh, rolling hills okay and a little bit of sky all right so I'm going to get started with the sky I think I'm going to do the sky and then we'll start to pick out areas um, to do all the other stuff okay so I'm not going to um, put my colors out on this paper just because I don't have anywhere to put them because I'm using up the whole section. Maybe I'll put them right next to it. All right, for the sky, I'm actually going to use cobalt teal. So yeah, I'm gonna put them here on the other page next to it and then this page next to it, I'll figure something out when I get there. All right, cobalt teal for the sky. And I'm definitely gonna be using sap green for my hills. But I'm gonna add phthalo blue to my sap green for another color, another version of green. And I will, um, I should have just put the phthalo out there. So this is a combination of these two. And I'm also gonna use burnt sienna and raw umber. So raw umber, burnt sienna, you know what, I'm gonna use a little quinacridone magenta too for the flowers, I'm gonna make those pink. Feels like a lot of colors. All right, so let's get painting. I'm gonna start with the sky, like I said, I'm gonna use this cobalt teal color, but very watered down. This blue color reminds me, especially when I use it for skies, it reminds me of like a vintage kind of photo processing, like how some colors came out. Around my hills. So I am, as always, painting my Baohong sketchbook. I know I've heard some folks say it's been hard to get the cold press version of this. It is. I'm so sorry. I wish I really liked a different, more eligible journal <laughs> that I could recommend to you guys. Um, the Tumorta one that I used at the beginning of this series was not bad at all, so I would still recommend that. All right, I'm gonna start with a combo of sap green actually I'm just gonna start with sap green for now so I'm gonna start down here with sap green I'm just gonna do basically a flat kind of wash. Go around my flowers, around my door. Not gonna fuss too much with it because I am gonna add more texture and more green colors. I'm just trying to make sure everything's kind of an even dampness. Oops. 
by the time I end. So it can all dry together at the same time. All right, and then actually while this is still wet, I'm gonna make a darker sap green and I'm gonna put that over here All right, there we go. And now I'm gonna jump into the door itself. I am gonna put on a layer of burnt sienna, nice and light. I'm gonna work around my window. See, I dropped in a little bit darker color in a few spots of the burnt sienna, but always in like an up and down fashion. And now I'm gonna take some raw umber and burnt sienna, mix those together. While this is still wet, I'm gonna come under the flowers here. Whoops, try to create a little bit of a shadow. But then also we're gonna play into these boards, the shape of the boards. Go even a little darker, a few spots. And we are gonna have to let this dry. All right, so let's let that dry and then we'll come back and add some more layers to it. And we can work on the other hills now. And I've put my hand in this wet paint like multiple times. Uh, don't do what I do. Unless it looks really good, then do what I do. Okay. And again, like I said, I want this to be textured, so I'm not worried. It's I'm gonna add more layers. I'm not worried about it like getting a little funky because I'm gonna do this anyway. So I just took some phthalo blue and some sap green. So letting it dry brush a little. There we go. Okay, let it dry. We'll come back to it. All right. So let's get these other hills painted in. I'm just gonna do lots of different uh, shades of green of this phthalo and sap green combination. So this one, I'm gonna make them go from blue, the bluest further, furthest back, I think, progressively as we get closer to the greenest, the most sap greeny. What a pretty color, super dramatic and dark, but it's gorgeous. 
This is quite difficult to do considering this isn't dry yet and I have to like rest my hand down here. I'm trying to be very good. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna dry everything that's here and then we're gonna continue. Okay, we're back. So I'm gonna take this color, I'm gonna add more green to it. So now it's more of a green color. And I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna do two of these, this one and that one. In this color. Another one over here. If you want to grade these at all, or um, so, like do a gradient wash where it's lighter on one side and darker on the other, you could do that. Just keeping it pretty simple. A little more green, a little bit lighter. here. go and then you know what I am gonna switch this up because I feel like it's gonna be too much green I'm actually gonna put some of that dark blue or darker kind of bluish green or version of it up front too you know it's kind of going for a look but now I'm gonna switch it up I think that'll be fine Beautiful rolling hills here. And this one will do. I'm kind of rethinking this. I would have added a yellow in so I could mix the yellow in with the green. And I could have had some brighter yellow green colors in addition to the blue green. All right. Just sure we get all these little spots filled in. All right, so now we're gonna move on to adding in, I'm just gonna add in some darker color towards the bottom here. 
and some texture over this first hill. Boop, boop, boop. Dry brushing a little bit. Kind of going with the grain of the hill. And we're also going to add in those flowers. But first, let me add, so burnt sienna, raw umber, mix them together to make a darker reddish brown. I'm gonna add in some more details. You can see just more shadow under the flowers, the non-existent flowers so far. A little shadow around the edges there. And I will fill in that window in a second. All right, so the little window, I'm just gonna put some yellow in there and then we'll put the frame around it after that's dry. So put some yellow in there. And then this outside edge, I'm just gonna do a lighter brown. All gonna kind of be the same color, but we're gonna separate it by the shadow on the inside. <laughs> And you might want to let this dry a little bit more. And we'll put our handle in at the end. The shadow is what really kind of sets this apart. All right, so let's let all of that dry and then we're gonna add in flowers and finish it off. All right, we're back. I'm gonna get rid of this because I need that space. I'm gonna use some um, Kodakuro Magenta. I think that will set this space off nicely with the green. Uh, I am going to just kind of dab my way through here. With some water, we want lights and darks. And then I will throw in a little bit of dark, dark, dark greenery. It's gonna kind of look like a blob at first. And then we're gonna pick up some darker colors. Like that. Some sap green and some Payne's gray. I'm going to dab in a few splotches for like leaves and stems poking out. in even a little more shadow there. And last 
last but not least, we're going to put in a little bit darker. There we go. All right, our beautiful little flower door. Let's put in our final touches. I'm going to get a smaller brush. I have a really tiny one here, but I'm going to use this to add our window frame. on our door. Might give it a little shadow underneath. And a handle. You can just use dark, dark brown. For these make your handle round, you can make it rectangular. And then if there's anywhere else you want to add in kind of some tiny detail on the door, some extra texture, this would be the time to do it. I'm just using this tiny little brush to add some dry brushing to it. There we go. Works for me. Okay. And again, whatever you want to add, you want to add more layers for the hills to give a little more differentiation. Uh, if you want to add other elements like trees and bushes and things on your hills or birds in your sky, I am going to add um, a layer of this blue green over top of this hill. I think we just need a little bit more variation in our hills out here. It's all a little too green, similar in color. And I think having these emeralds or blue like really blue turquoisey green can make it interesting next to those warmer green tones of sap green. Just gives it a little oomph. And then this one, I'm just going to separate a little with a little darker color. All right. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this one. We're going to take off the tape. Don't forget to check out the description for links to supplies and materials. Um, find me on Instagram and also like this video, subscribe to this channel, share it with a friend who might also like to watch this watercolor video or learn a little bit about watercolor. Oh, my tape ripped. Now this book is pretty good. Um, this is pretty harsh tape. This is not low tack tape. If you have a problem with your tape, you can always, always um, warm it up first with a little heat tool uh, and it'll come right off super easy. All right, there we are, our little hobbit hole door. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me. Thank you again. Take care, y'all, and I'll see you for our next watercolor journal idea uh, very shortly.